In this lesson, you will learn the following, how to create and use custom Cypress commands, how to test forms, and we will also give you opportunities to practice the concepts you have learned in this lesson. If you get stuck, the answers are provided. Currently, we are getting the elements in our application using this verbose syntax. While there is nothing wrong with this, it is difficult to write and hard to read. Ideally, we could simplify the syntax to something more like this. This is an example of the custom Cypress command we are going to learn how to create. GetByData is the name of our custom command. The string hero heading is the value of the data test attribute on our element. This is the code for our custom Cypress command. You can see we are giving our command the name getByData. This selector variable contains the value of the data test attribute we are trying to get, which in the previous example was hero heading. So when we use our custom command like so, the string we pass into our command is the value of the data test attribute we are trying to get. This value is then passed into our custom Cypress command, and then the value is inserted into a sci.get, which then gets returned by our command. So when we update our test to use our custom Cypress command like so, under the hood, our command is actually returning the original verbose sci.get with the complicated syntax. Our custom command is what is commonly referred to as syntactic sugar. This means our custom command is not changing any behavior or functionality, it simply makes it easier for us to read and write our tests. Our custom command is a relatively simple example of a custom Cypress command. Later on in the curriculum, we will discuss the custom commands in greater detail with more intricate and complicated examples. Custom Cypress commands need to be added to the commands.ts file inside of the support directory. By default, Cypress creates this file with a lot of code comments and examples of several custom commands. We can delete all of these comments except for the references at the top. The reference types at the top is necessary for TypeScript, so make sure you do not delete this line. Next, we can add our custom command like so. Now that we have added our custom command, we can start using it within our tests, which we will do shortly. One of the most common things you will find yourself writing tests for in any web application are forms. In our course application, in the Heroes section of the homepage, we have a single input field and button that allows users to sign up for our newsletter. On the surface, this simple form may seem like an easy thing to test. After all, there's only a single input field, right? Not so fast. Before we begin writing tests for this form, let's discuss all the various scenarios our users can experience with this quote unquote simple form. How do we know if a user has successfully subscribed to our newsletter? What if a user enters a bad email? Does the form display a success message when a user has signed up successfully? Does the form display an error message when things go wrong? What happens if the user has already subscribed to our newsletter? What happens if the input field is blank and they click the subscribe button? As you can see, this simple form is quite complicated once you begin to think through all of the various scenarios and states a user can experience. We are now going to write a test that confirms that a user is able to successfully sign up for our newsletter. Create a new file called subscribe.cy.ts. And then add the following. Notice that right off the bat, we are adding a before each hook, which we discussed in the previous lesson. The reason for doing this is that every single test in this file needs to navigate to the homepage of our application, since that is where this form is. Now let's launch Cypress and confirm everything is working correctly. Next, we need to get the input field of our form. Let's use the selector playground in Cypress to select it. The input field has a data test attribute of email input. This is what we will use inside of our sci.get. Now let's save our spec file and confirm everything is passing so far. Great, everything is still passing. Now that we have the email input field, we next need to tell Cypress to type in an email address into this field. We can do this by using the type command like so.
Remember how in the previous lesson I mentioned the concept of time travel debugging? Well, here's a perfect use case and example of it. Within the Cypress command log, we can click on the before and after states of when Cypress types in the email address. So we can see what the state of our test was like before Cypress typed in the email and after it by clicking on these before and after buttons. This is a great way to debug our test and find out exactly what is going on during each step of our test. Next, we need to get the email subscribe button and then click on it. In the Cypress app, we can see a success message displayed to the user letting them know that they have subscribed successfully. Let's write an assertion to make sure that this message appears after successful submission. The first thing we need to do is get the success message element, which we can do again via the selector playground. Our element has a data test attribute of success message, which we can reference in our test with our custom command like so. Next, we want to make sure that this message exists in the DOM like so. This will let us know that the success message is being displayed on our page. Finally, we can chain on the contains command to make sure that the success message contains the email we subscribed with like so. Great, our test is passing and we can now be confident that users who submit a valid email can successfully subscribe to our newsletter. Now let's write a test that asserts that users cannot sign up if they provide an invalid email address. We will create a new test just below our first test. We can then copy and paste the contents from our previous test as a starting point. The first thing we need to do is have Cypress type in a bad email address. Then we click on the submit button. Finally, we will write an assertion that says that our success element message should not exist. And as you can see, both of our tests are passing. Now that you have learned how to test forms, it is time for some practice. You're going to write a test that asserts that users cannot subscribe if they are already subscribed. In order for this to work, you will need to use the email address john at example.com. Your test will not work unless you use this specific email. As always, if you get stuck, the answer is provided in the lesson article below.